I'd like some trues. I'd like some trues right now. I'd like trues with bad sound. You'll get some trues shortly. You'll get some trues. Here is some trues right now. Where is my trues? Here is some trues right now. Here is some trues. With aeroplane noise all over the audio. Here is the trues. Here is some trues. Dun 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 dun. Oh, I might just relax, read the paper on the toilet. Piranhas lurking down the loo! Oh no! Piranha fish have been found in the drains of British Town, so it's not actually in the loo. Fortunately, the flesh eating creatures were dead! You bastards, man. Like, right, there's piranhas down the loo. What? That's really bad. So there's piranhas in the loo. They could attack me. Mate, are you giving me all the information? Yeah. Just to make sure, are you? The piranhas are dead and they're not in the loo. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's boring the way that you say it. Yeah, but it's also true. That's not really a priority for us. We might we like make razzmatazz. Didn't you want some razzmatazz? Yeah, I love razzmatazz. Not in the paper though. Not in the paper. Exams in move bid for fasting Muslims. Call to move GCSEs to avoid Ramadan. Here you can sort of feel the implications. Why? Why should we move our GCSEs for our bloody Ramadan? The GCSEs, that's our proudest tradition. What, GCSE Day? Ever since I was a little boy, I used to celebrate GCSE. Is it GCSE Day, mister? Yes, go and get me a goose for GCSE. Get the finest goose in the shop. Probably because children are fasting during Ramadan and it's affected their GCSE results. It's probably quite sensible. I don't have like a sentimental attachment to GCSE day. Oh no, it's not GCSE day now. Do you know why? Because of bloody Ramadan. <laughs> scientists, let's be sting him on the penis. University scientist Michael Smith decided to find out where the worst place to be stung by a bee was and discovered it wasn't on his penis. In the name of research, I do this for research. I love research. I like to search something and then once I've searched it, I do that again. Research, I call that. Mr. Smith chose 25 locations around his body, including forearm, testicles and cheek in the palm of his hand. Grasping a honeybee in forceps, he held it up against his skin until he was stung and repeated the exercise up to five times a day. I thought bees die when they sting someone. So like this bee, what annoying thing to do. Like vegans won't eat honey because it's out of order to nick it off the bees. I ain't done that experiment. Here's my conclusion. It really hurts and it's horrible. Like how much further do we need to go down this avenue? But what if it gets up into my body and stings me there? What if I marry the bee and then I love it and I'm nice to it and then it goes down my little pee hole and stings me there? You dirty bee perf. I really don't want to get a sting in the nose again. That's not fun, he told the Independent. You only see me like getting stung on nuts, you dirty devil. A sting on his penis rated 7.3 out of 10 pain-wise. That's made up. It's not a real thing. He just... I say it's about 7.3, the old dicky sting. You, mate, are wasting time. That's why our worship of science as a whole irritates me. Because I think science, of course, it, well, we've got loads to be grateful for. I'm not one of them people who get rid of science. Just saying, recognise its limitations, that it can only address certain materialistic questions, matters, areas. There's loads of things like this. You know when you're a kid and like they put that on the news, like the FTSE 100 index, you go, this is bollocks, right? That's what you think it is, a kid. You're right! It's a load of old bollocks, it turned out. No, it ain't. You just don't understand it. You're just a kid and you're an idiot. I'm pretty sure it's bollocks. No, you idiot. You've not understood. You've not understood that way. When you see all them numbers go across the screen when you're little, you think, I don't think this means anything very much. You're right. What the hell's going on with these guys? Hey, boss. What'd you text Termy me for, boss? Oh, 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 oh. That is not even identifiable as one of our creatures that we have on this planet. I'd love these guys now. I've been looking at them for a while and I want to buy them. Look at that, how surprised it is about being dead. I'm going to get those things. It's probably in different places on this. It's not like they all live together, like the raggy dolls or the Smurfs or something, and at night they'll wake up. Hey, 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 I can't see nothing. Hey, hey, I'm going to hey, you. <laughs> They're making me go a bit mad. They're all in such weird moods because I suppose when your taxidermy you're frozen in one sort of dead expression. I prefer these to normal taxidermy so they look like they're having a real laugh. Well done, guys! Artists to live inside bear for two weeks. Ah, also bollocks. <laughs> Everything's bollocks. <laughs> The French artist has begun a piece of performance art that will see him spend 13 days inside a bear. 
Adrian Pomcheval will eat, drink, sleep, and relieve himself inside the sterilised carcass of a bear <laughs> while being filmed by two cameras. He's first performed Dans la Peau de l'Ore inside the skin of a bear at the centre of contemporary art in Dean last year. Am I being an idiot? It's just like when like Deschamps urinal was like, oh, that's not, mate, that ain't art, that's just a urinal, Damien Hurst, that's just a load of dots or butterflies. I like Damien Hurst's art, and I thought René Deschamps pissoir thing was a work of genius showing us that context was what's important but by the time you're going inside the skin of a bear to do a wee wee <laughs> what can that teach us well so we're living within the animalism we human beings we've become so sanitized and the bo even our own body has become a zoo with us reduced to simple managers of our own body what vitamins will we intake what kind of experience of the world will we have but just tell me that don't go and live in a bear <laughs> He previously spent a week in an underground hole beneath a bookshop in Marseille. I am Abraham Punchevert. If you want me, I'll be under the bookshop. Think of my French farts. <laughs> but then, on one hand, I am always arguing that the problems with our culture is we've lost contact with those kind of rights, rituals and ideas and we live in a sterilised, sanitised world. And then poor old Abraham Pontreval tries to create a bit of art and I criticise him for that. It's like I'll never be happy, never, never be happy because my expectations are too high. Traditional German favourite, you can have some baking potatoes. Traditional German favourite, some premium wheat fest beer. Traditional German favourite, would you like some green beans? Traditional German favourite, so oh, no, I remember now this great deal of acrimony between our two countries and you hate German cuisine and in fact always view with a degree of negativity, anything that's German except perhaps Jürgen Klinsmann. <laughs> Traditional German favourites, we don't have a history of liking their stuff, do we? <laughs> I need some traditional German favourites. Oh, I'm peckish, do you know what I fancy? Is it traditional German favourite? Alright, so that was some truths was about some interesting things. Now here's some analysis from deep down in the core of the human mind. This is from a book analysing the, the psychiatry, philosophy and mythology of Carl Jung, one of the founders of the profession of psychiatry, but also an, an intriguing mystic and some say occultist. The stage of heterism in which polygamy, meaning both polyndry and polygyny, was the norm, you can have it off of who you want basically, was the norm in this wild, instinctual, nomadic, communistic and liberated society. Both sexes lived instinctually and freely, but also cruelly and savagely by 19th century bourgeois standards. There was no agriculture, no marriage for women, for women were free and promiscuous and did not know or care to know the fathers of their children. The goddess of this Tellurian phase, marked by its earth symbolism, was an ancient form of Aphrodite. So societies, I think it's in ancient Greece, or perhaps prior to that, used to organise themselves in a very different way from the way we did now. Women completely free. I suppose that's why men need to exert power over women and subjugate them and make them sex objects. Page three of the sun, pornography, just the way they are in films. A woman, a female character is likely to be scantily clad and eroticised in terms of their costume in a Walt Disney film, as they are in a in an R-rated film or an 18 movie in our country. That's amazing, isn't it? So, And you think that sounds right, but then think about what Tinkerbell's got on. It's the right little slag. So that, but society wasn't always like that. Femininity was regarded as extremely potent, and for, for, for patriarchy to succeed, that femininity has to be maligned, undermined. The second phase of this history was the true phase of mother right, das Mutteracht, in which this bloke, Bakhoffen, said was a lunar phase where agriculture became the economic and social basis of a society identified with Mother Earth. Suppose it would, wouldn't it? You've got agriculture, you've been fed by the land, you start to worship Mother Earth. You see its fertility, its fecundity, it creates life like women do. The first laws that promoted the continuation of a society based on egalitarian values came into being. That's interesting. The most serious crime in this society was matricide, murder of a woman or mother. Indeed, the great goddess of this era was none other than Demeter, the mother goddess of Eleusis. This was fitted as Demeter was the goddess of grain, and Bacchophon believed women invented agriculture. A relatively brief transitional phase in which Dionysus was the most prominent deity follows this second stage and leads to our present stage of patriarchy, symbolised by the sun, the glorification of the intellectual sphere and rule by men. The god of this era was Apollo. Once patriarchy was established, all signs of matriarchy were systematically wiped out, although Bakafen sees it everywhere, in the same way that, Bl that Blavatsky, Madame Blavatsky, claimed to see evidence of the secret doctrine hidden away in the world's great religions and philosophies. 
the Lamb of God, pagan agricultural worship. If you go in a church, you'll see like there's loads of flowers and bits of grain and Harvest Festival and Easter. It's the worship of nature, the worship of agriculture and the earth's fecundity. The figure of the, the deification of the mother of Christ is us needing to worship in femininity. Because like, she's just Jesus' mum, she ain't done nothing. You ain't done nothing. I don't know, you're not my real dad. Actually, I'm not. <laughs> so there you go, there's alternative societies all around us. There's all sorts of different ways of working the world. So maybe that man should be allowed to live inside a bear and scientists should be able to have their dick stung by a bee. That is some truths, that is some truths today. There is some truths, that is some truths today. The truth today for you. Dum, 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 dum. Mm -hmm. Right, let's get the plate gun on today.